this is the fifth and final video for radar and we're going to look at uh, radar or precipitation and identification using radar and then also the limitations of radar with precipitation identification what you can do is identify the difference between convective echoes and stratiform echoes convective meaning formed by thunderstorms or convective clouds and stratiform typically means nimbostratus so with convective echoes the way you identify convective echoes is usually they form in lines or in individual cells they have very strong radar returns and also radar reflectivity gradients gradients meaning that the change in colors is very rapid and then of course if you are looping or watching it over a period of time you'll see that those colors change and they move very quickly whereas stratiform echoes don't change as fast they're more stable they cover a larger area and typically have weaker radar returns and the gradient is also weaker so you'll have instead of reds you'll see greens and maybe a little bit of yellow and you'll see that change over a large distance it won't change very much now the limitations for a ground-based weather radar there's a number of them and they're all listed here um, they, they, they go there's contamination and also there is uh, uh, overshoot and undershoot we're going to talk about overshoot and undershoot first so uh, beam overshoot means that um, the radar beam is going over the top of the precipitation and this is typically the lowest radar scan uh, your base reflectivity so this is an issue where you can't see anything below you're overshooting the top this is more of a problem with stratiform precipitation because stratiform precipitation usually forms less than 10,000 feet above the ground so uh, it is a problem if you have uh, thunderstorms that have very low tops we're talking 15 or 20,000 feet at greater distances remember the radar beam is higher above the ground out at greater distances so the farther out you are the farther out you're looking uh, the less you'll see and also it's a problem in mountainous areas where the radar is sitting on top of an elevated terrain looking uh, straight out it doesn't see anything down below it undershoot is a problem and it happens when the radar beam is um, not looking at anything um, uh, above it in other words it's undershooting and this typically happens when uh, storms start to move towards the radar and move into what we call the zone or the cone of silence and that's where remember we said that for precipitation mode the radar can only uh, point up to 19 and a half degrees so it doesn't look straight up doesn't look at 90 degrees above the radar and it can only look at 19.5 so as a result as the radar as the uh, thunderstorms move towards the radar they start to disappear uh, at higher elevations you get uh, undershoot as I mentioned this typically happens close to the radar but also can happen with high ba high base convection typically in the high plains of the United States you get thunderstorms that develop with bases that are about 10,000 feet and uh, you can miss those uh, if those thunderstorms are close to the radar other limitations and problems uh, with radar beam blockage and this is more common in mountainous terrain um, and the best way to identify beam blockage you kind of see kind of a, a weak area on the radar returns um, where you have along a radial you see weaker areas so what you do is you look at other radars to kind of fill in the gap uh, one that's close by that might give you some idea or you look at satellite or other resources to help give you more information about that area ground clutter is a problem also this is where the radar beam bounces off the surface of the earth and produces a return typically this happens close to the radar and it may produce uh, high radar re uh, high radar reflectivities the way that you tell that you have ground clutter is by looking at satellite and seeing that there's no clouds there and then also ground clutter doesn't move so if you see it sitting there for a long period of time from radar scan to radar scan you've got ground clutter other limitations or problems ghosts are point targets that uh, are out there like insects but more so uh, you'll see ghosts uh, as a result of the refraction uh, of radar beams uh, in the air in clear air 
So in other words, uh, ghost is just kind of a, um, a very weak radar return around the radars, extending out for maybe about 10 miles or so. And, um, you know, when you have strong inversions in the atmosphere, like you do during the summertime when the ground starts to cool off, uh, the radar beam is tilted down, or not tilted down necessarily, but actually just refracts off, off of that uh, rate, uh, temperature inversion. So you get a, a weak return coming back. It's not bouncing off the ground. It's just um, coming back off of um, a temperature discontinuity in the atmosphere. So you'll see that. And, and this happens all the time in the summertime. You see kind of a blue haze around the radar. And you'll see that all across the entire United States, all these radars showing up blue. And that's what ghosts are. Angels are a little bit different. Those are uh, circular echoes that are caused by birds and bats or insects, mostly birds and bats. Bats happen at night. Birds happen in the morning. Also, sometimes you'll see some uh, as uh, along a front as air kind of converges, you'll see birds and bats actually take flight, too. Usually these are low reflectivity, um, you know, they're blue, but they're donut shaped. Um, you'll only see it in clear air mode because it's detecting the, the really weak uh, returns and they expand over a period of time. Anomalous propagation is where uh, you actually get ground returns from a great distance away from the radar. This is caused by super refraction or ducting, meaning that the radar beam is bent towards the ground and actually strikes the ground a great distance from the radar. So it usually so shows up as really strong radar returns. A lot of people misidentify those at thunderstorms. So how do you know if you are getting anomalous pro uh, propagation? You use other sources. Look at the satellite. Is there any thunderstorms out at that location? Also use other radars to scan that area to see if there's anything out there. This concludes our lectures on radar. I hope you enjoyed them.